Okay, so there were questions about, uh, in particular about problem one for this. So I, I thought that I would uh, kind of step through how to think about solving problem one for homework two. And uh, basically you're given a, uh, whoa, you're given a uh, stress tensor and you're asked to uh, convert that to the uh, corresponding strains and then to rotate both of those tensors 15 degrees about around the y-axis. Okay, so the first comment is that uh, you can use equation uh, 2.11 from your textbook. Uh, however, you should be aware, and you know, I'll, I'll certainly take that as an answer, uh, but I want you to be aware that in your textbook, when they talk about the shear stresses, or sorry, the shear strains, they use gamma. And in my notes, I'm using epsilon. So I just call this one, two, you know, one, two, whatever. That this is going to be uh, the shear strains, uh, one, two. And there's a difference. And that difference is that this one that they're using is not symmetric. So when you look at their tensor representation, it's not really a tensor. And by that, what I mean is that if you have, you know, some uh, coordinate system and you've got your, you know, infinitesimal box in that, and you apply a strain, if you remember from the first day of our discussion on stress strain, we had a uh, drawing like this, right? And if that's some angle, we said that gamma is equal to tangent of that angle. And this is the definition they're using. Then if you remember following through the next day's lecture, or maybe it's two days lecture, we took and we said that uh, the strain tensor is equal to a, a symmetric component plus a rotational. And then we just kept the symmetric and we threw away the rotational part. What that essentially did was it took and it applied an equal rotation around uh, from, from both axes. So by saying that we now have the uh, symmetric strain, we're saying that uh, we are uh, getting it from kind of both sides. And, and that is the definition that we were using in, in the course notes. So I, I just wanted to make certain that you understood that there was a difference there. Uh, and again, you can go and you can use equation you know, 2.11 or you can take the equations from, from my notes. They're the same except for the, the way that they express the shear uh, strains. Okay, so if you're given your stresses and strain tensors, rotate 15 degrees around the y-axis. So how do we do that? Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, define our translation or our uh, transformation tensor. And let's, let's uh, draw a picture of what this is going to look like. So this is, uh, let's just draw the, the positive directions here for the sake of uh, simplicity. So if this is X, Y, Z, 
And again, make sure you have a right-handed axis system, that's important. And then we rotate it around the y-axis. We now get x prime, z prime, and y prime. So the y and the y prime don't change at all. And this is 15 degrees, and that is 15 degrees also. So the way that I said to define this, and again, this is a, a correction from the notes I sent out emails today about this, is, is that uh, we want to define our transformation tensor x, y, z, x prime, y prime, z prime. And then here we want to have cosine of the angle between the x and x prime. So in that case, it's 15 degrees uh, between x and y prime, cosine of 90 degrees, x and z prime, which is uh, 90 plus 15 or uh, 105. Okay, now the y and the x prime, cosine 90, the y and the y prime, cosine zero, the y and the z prime, cosine 90, okay. The z and the x prime, so that's gonna be 90 minus 15. Uh, the z and the y prime, which is cosine 90, and then the z and the z prime, cosine 15. And this will be our transformation tensor. Now, the important thing here also is that uh, we can uh, transform that. Well, let's just fill in the blanks, I should say. That's zero. 0, 0, 0, that is 1. Cosine of 90 plus 15 is negative sine of 15. Cosine 90 minus 15 is sine 15. So our transformation tensor looks like cosine 15, 0, negative sine 15, 0, 1, 0, sine 15, 0, cosine 15. And we can verify that for ourselves by taking and applying a transformation. Well, let's apply this transformation to the uh, x-axis. So if you do that, you're going to be taking uh, one times cosine 15 plus zero times zero plus zero times sine is equal to uh, cosine 15, then uh, zero times one, one times zero, zero times one, zero, and zero times sine, uh, sorry, sine times one, plus zero times zero plus 15, cosine 15 times zero is going to be, sorry, sine 15. And if we look at a, a picture of this, we have our z and x. So we just move these and uh, x prime. x prime is definitely going to fit here as cosine of 15 and sine of 15. 
we could do the same thing if we wanted to uh, take t times 0, 0, 1. And if we do that, we're going to get uh, negative sine 15, 0, cosine 15. And that corresponds to uh, this. So you have 15, 15. Here we've got, uh, oh, sorry. Here we've got negative x. So it's negative and sine of 15, which is going to be kind of that distance, that distance. And then we've got cosine of 15. So we know that that transformation matrix is correct. <clears throat> okay, so how do we apply this? Well, we have our uh, stress tensor, and I'm just going to give one example here. 2, 4, negative 3, 4, 5, 1, negative 3, 1, 5. And those correspond to the elements sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3, sigma 2, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 2, 3, sigma 3, 1, sigma 3, 2, sigma 3, 3. Okay. And up here, these are corresponding to T11, T12, T13, T21, T22, T23, T31, T32, T33. And then we use the tensor multiplication that sigma i l prime is equal to t i j t l k sigma j k. So a convenient way to remember this is to note that i is the first, so the, the first uh, the first coordinate of the new matri matrix is the first of the first transformation. The second of the new matrix is the first of the second transformation matrix. And then the J and the L, or sorry, the J and the K correspond to the original coordinate system. And, and this is a, a handy way to uh, remember the, the ordering. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, this means that we're going to perform tensor multiplication. Not matrix multiplication. Uh, so if you, you know, go into Wikipedia and you look up tensor multiplication, uh, you'll find that they use this symbol to represent the multiplication. Here I just use juxtaposition, uh, but you know, if you had A, B, it's not equal to A, B. Because in this tensor multiplication, you're going to necessarily have a double sum and in this matrix multiplication, you just have six terms, whereas here you've got nine. So what do I mean by a double sum? I mean that what should be here, and this is, again, Einstein notation, if on any one side of the matrix, or sorry, of an equation, you have the subscript appearing twice, 
then you write it as a summation. And in this case, the J appears twice and the K appears twice. The I and the L only appear once here and only appear once here, which means we don't have to write it out as a uh, sum. So this is equal to sum over J equals one to three sum k equals one to three t i j t l k sigma j k so in practical terms that means that where we have our sigma prime is equal to sigma one one prime sigma one two sigma one three sigma two one prime sigma two two prime sigma two three prime sigma three one prime sigma three two prime sigma three three prime each one of these terms is going to require a double sum so let me uh, give one example of that. Let's look at sigma uh, one, two prime. So in the case of sigma one, two prime, we're going to have a sum over j equals one to three, sum k equals one to three, t one j, t two k, sigma j k. So notice here that the uh, subscripts on the left hand side uh, again show up in the right hand side there and, and that's why each of these terms is going to have a different summation. So let's write this out in full. This is equal to t11 T two one sigma one one plus T one one T two two sigma one two plus T one one T two three sigma one three plus T one two T two one sigma two one plus T one two t two two sigma two two plus t one two t two three sigma two three plus t one three t two one sigma three one plus t one three t two two t three two plus t one three t two three sigma three three so notice here that you know this entire row whoa that uh, this entire row corresponds to j equals one this row of the sum is j equals two, and this row of the sum is j equals three. And then in each term, uh, I iterated uh, the value for k. So there, there, and there. So each of these signifies a sum over k. So you get uh, nine terms in this expression. Okay. So going back up here, we've got a bunch of zeros. So it's worth pointing out that anytime you have a T21 or a T12, there's going to be a zero. So coming down here, T21. T12, T21, um, T12, T12. 
Okay, so we got rid of those. And anytime there is a T32 or a 32T23 or a T32, it is also a zero. So here is a uh, 23, 23. So we only have two terms. Oh, try that shouldn't be sigma, that should be a. That should be a sigma, not a, a T, sigma. Is that right? Right. Which means that sigma 1, 2 prime is equal to T1, 1, T2, 2, sigma 1, 2 plus T1, 3, T2, 2, sigma 3, 2. Or cosine 15 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 4 plus minus sine 15 times 1 times 1. And then you would go and uh, perform this, the same summation for uh, all six of the terms in the symmetric stress tensor and the six terms in the symmetric strain tensor. Let's see how I... Turn off the recording on this.